be too long tonight, right? That's no, a good thing. There's not that much to, mm -mm. to do. And the, agenda, the agenda looks very, you know, very doable in a short period of time. Yeah. yeah. And then we will have to, and also we're going to have to have another meeting anyway. So yes. we, you know, for right. our reorganization. Yeah. How do how do we get those results? Does Dave Ormiston check in with you, Nikki, or how, how does that work? I just wait for the listserv. Okay. <laughs> um, I can. I mean, I think Matt is counting votes. Oh, nice! If you want, so when he gets that. home, I can send everybody a message. You know, I can let everybody know. That'd be great. Um, yeah. I mean, the only. Thing, I mean, obviously, we, we're waiting on the budget. Right. Um, but the the school board seat is. We mm. pretty much know how that's going to go, so it's just it's on, it's unopposed, right? Yeah, yeah. Both Heather and I were unopposed. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll you know that's 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 good that that'll that'll you know take care of all of that. And I mean, you never can predict the budget, but we've had you know we've we've had pretty good luck, and I think the presentation was a good presentation. So it really was. Yeah. yeah. I'm hopeful. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what the turnout is because mm. you know I, it, it's just we, we just don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah. But honestly, like John and I, all of a sudden this morning, we're like, "Oh my God, we need to vote!" Like, mm. <laughs> you know, a lot of people had that. I, I, I got a bunch yeah. of emails from people saying, "Like, wait, what's the deal with the voting? I can I still turn it in?" And yeah. I, you know, People didn't really understand what the process was in, in a lot of cases. So you can forget. Who? Yeah. Well, I think we've all been a little distracted these this last week too. Wait, yes. It's so well, I, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Normal dialogue. Scott yeah. is here. Scott is here. Good. I had hoped he would be. He's I he's got another. What has he got? Eight hours of of being a board member. <laughs> well, <laughs> bring every last thing out of his. Tenure. <laughs> I was thinking I'm the lamest of lame ducks. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I mean, the polls only closed two minutes ago. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Like we haven't counted yet. You're interested. good. <laughs> if we have any big votes, let's get them all Scots here. <laughs> yeah, Scott, maybe there was a write in campaign, and you know, you. <laughs> Oh, Amy, Amy McMullen was saying that. I hope not. <laughs> there wasn't. There was in Windsor, but I don't think here. Oh no, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Well, we got a quorum. Colleen's always a little. Yeah. Slow for to log in. Um. But we'll give her a minute. Yeah, we can do that. Um, David, what are we titling our executive session tonight? Uh, I think that would be, it's actually a, a student matter. So I, I, I would, was thinking too. Uh, I think that's good. Okay. Um, we are going to need somebody to scratch minutes, but I, um, you know what I was going to say, Christine, I don't know. Uh, hope, I hope she's not on, but I think I, I think Lori, uh, is going to do the SU minutes. I okay. think she's finally decided that. I wonder if we could talk to Linda or, 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 or Heidi about whether or not she'd be willing to. I mean, yeah. there is a stipend. I think it's $75 a, a meeting. And, you know, I just, we just haven't had any takers. And, you know, or you could comp her, you know, take a half day and but come on those days and but come in and do the minutes. Do you want to have a conversation with her? I will put it on my list. Yeah. That's sure. great. Colleen's here. Yeah, we're all here. Okay. You want me to start recording? Yeah. And then what do you want to do about minutes? Do you want to just to, to uh, um, groups? I mean, I, I don't know. I think I, mean, I could, I could probably, but I, I can, tr I can do it. I just always have a harder time participating. Yeah. Well, I could, I know that's the, that's the hard part. You can't. I scratched. I'm happy. Like I scratched stuff down on my, printed agenda and I scratched up on it during the meeting and I can I mean Beth you you did it last time so do, do you want me to do it this time and then you can participate a little more this time and I'm okay I mean I just started a Google Doc so I'll share it in the drive and so if I feel like I need to talk somebody else can take notes while I'm talking 
Okay. From scratch, yeah, exactly. We can do that. And the other thing too is Lori is watching the the recordings and she does clean it up when she can. But I I feel bad asking you to do all three districts and the SU. That that's not right. So, so okay. but but I think we can get it done. So, so David, just send them there. Not recording. Are we good? We're recording. You just need to call the order oh, when you're ready. Recording. Okay, never mind. That we is are recording. We didn't get the notice this time. Um, okay, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the a regular meeting of the Heartland School Board at uh, 7.05 on March 1st, the first Tuesday of March. Um, so we'll start with any changes or additions to the agenda. Um, the one... We will have an executive session tonight for a student matter. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else? Okay. I think that's uh, it. So I'll take a motion to approve the February 1st, 2022 meeting minutes. I, I'll make a motion that we approve okay. the minutes. So, Sarah? Second. Followed Colleen. by Colleen. Okay. Uh, was there any discussion about the minutes? They looked good to me. So, who typed these up? Lori? Well, well I think Beth and, uh, Beth and Lori kind of worked, but I think Beth did most of the work. Beth, these are really awesome. Yeah, you did a great I, job. I can actually see why you didn't like you felt like you maybe couldn't participate <laughs> so yeah. so let's let's not <laughs> let that happen and let's figure out how to make it work um, so. i just emailed the link to everybody okay. those, the current note document okay. you want to add anything there i'm going to pull it up so that if you start talking one of us can start filling in um okay uh, so I think we'll move to vote on the February 1st meeting uh, minutes. So, oh, I have to do a roll call. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sarah, you're in the top corner. Aye. Aye. Okay. Scott. Aye. Uh, Beth. Aye. See what she means? We should, that's exactly <laughs> the point. <laughs> no, I'm on a different, like once I'm typing, I'm on a different screen, so I don't even see people. That's why. Oh. <laughs> And Colleen. Aye. And myself, aye. Um, okay, so we've approved the minutes five to zero, and there were no abstentions. We were all here, as I recall. We've had really awesome meeting attendance, by the way, guys. That's mm, yeah. it's true. That's like, I can't remember a meeting that we weren't all here. Um, okay, so uh, we have public participation or any announcements? Do we have, yeah, I'm going to go with no. Okay. Um, does anybody have any announcements that this is Scott's official last meeting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I wish we were in person. You are going to have to come back and visit us. Maybe sometime when Craig cooks us dinner, you'll come mm -hmm. join us. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, so, so. Uh, I think you're on mute, Scott. You're on mute, Scott. <laughs> Yeah, I felt bad because I, I, I missed the community dinner just because I wasn't paying attention. But I, um, it was good. You know what? Really the, um, Heartland is got lots of capable people to do this kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't feel um, bad about this. So, oh, Heartland School District. No, we're just gonna miss you. First thing. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, I'm gonna miss you guys too. You, you have to come join us for dinner. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll make sure of that. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for everyone for saying so many nice things in the last few weeks. And it uh, means a lot to me. We mean that. So <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. Uh, any other? No. Okay. Um, we are getting through this agenda. Okay, so uh, we're already on the principal's report, Christine. Perfect, because we have a guest uh, tonight who's going to present, and I told her we would, she would go on early. So let me, Rosemary, let me let me share my screen first, okay, and then, <laughs> Wait, and then I'll introduce I didn't send you. 
I have it. You, Mr. Okay. Butt sent it to me. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. be like, I didn't send it to you. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> sorry. Me... All right. Okay. Um, this one. Okay. Share my screen. Takes me to the end. So give me a second here. All right, so can everybody see my screen? Perfect. All right, good. Okay, so um, I just a big shout out to um, Craig and his team for another very successful community dinner. Over 250 meals served, and we had um, we had a little bit of concern because we had two basketball games that night, but we situated outside the kitchen on the other side and it worked out really well and basketball families that were at the basketball games were really happy because they came out and got their dinner and ate it during basketball. So it worked out and it was delicious and we had a lot of fun, lots of laughter, which, which felt good. And the community seems very appreciative. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. We'll continue with these. Hopefully next year we'll be back inside and we can pair them with um, other events at the school. All right. So IDL update. So, um, uh, Tina is not coming tonight. Instead, we are having a student come tonight to present her Shark Tank project. And I know Mr. Butts is here. I don't know if he wants to I'll put him on the spot. Um, Mr. Butts, do you want to do a brief overview of the Shark Tank? Um, sure, I can uh, go ahead and jump in. Uh, so ideally, this um, really is a great way of using an IDL where this wasn't the original direction we were going but it changed to that based upon the students' input and what they were doing with the project. Uh, it originally started out as a comic book theme uh, where they were just gonna do a small pitch and leave it at that. And I felt it wasn't enough. And a lot of the students wanted to actually make a product. So we adjusted things, tweaked it, and turned it into a shark tank. So um, it was amazing because kids were able to then delve into ideas and thoughts that were beyond just the comic book theme and be able to do something that was unique and that was personalized to themselves. So we ended up getting a better result by allowing the students to have free choice in this. So that's kind of the background on it and why we're, where we're at now with Shark Tank, so. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, um, and Michael was the lead on um, the comic book theme uh, and the kids did lots of projects. And I think um, just being able to see some of them, um, I didn't get to see all of them, but I got to see a fair number, watching the kids just present, which um, is a really important skill. Some of them were terrified. Some of them worked in teams. Um, I did get to see Rosemary's, uh, I think she was the first one I saw. And I, yeah. um, I was just a little bit moved by her presentation. So I invited her tonight to share it with you all. So I'm going to see if I linked it correctly. Share. Okay. Do you see? Yes. Okay. Let me put it in slideshow if I can, Rosemary. Okay. Okay. So this is Rosemary Dalbra. She's an eighth grader at Heartland. Um, and this was her business plan. So Rosemary, I'm going to be quiet and um, let you present. Okay. Well, next slide, please. This is my business plan for Ice How and, um, Oh, I have to request access. Mm. I'll give you access if I can figure okay. out how to do this. I'm not tech savvy. I try, but I'm not. Just tell me when you've done it, Rosemary, and I'll check my email. Okay. I think it says I'll get an email. Let's see. Um, just give me a second. It's okay. The Google Meet makes everything on the computer very, very slow. It said I shared it, so you should get an email at soon. All right. I don't. I don't know if you'll be Here. able to use the video. 
That's it. Here it comes. Okay, I'm going to share as soon as it loads. All right, are you ready? I'm going to share this tab instead, Rosemary, so we can okay. see it. It would probably work best if everyone just muted because it's a video and sound over Google Meet, except for Miss Born because of the. Noise. Okay, can you see? Can you see it? Yes. All right, I'll hit play. One, two. Always how is part of a motto at a camp I go to. The whole motto is never camp. Always how. I chose it as my company name because I think that it should never have to be. You can't wear that even though you want to. I think it should always be how can you wear what makes you feel happy and like you. Always How is a clothing line, right now just shirts, that is inclusive to everyone. I know people who have had experiences with clothes shopping. My sister Matilda loves NASA. The problem though is that most stores don't have NASA shirts for just girls. Matilda will still wear an NASA shirt even if it is in the boys section, but the cut is not the same. Boys and girls cuts are different, so sometimes the shirt doesn't quite fit right. This is also true for non-binary people. Say you that you were non-binary and you wanted to wear a girl's shirt, but you had a boy's body. The cut might not fit you right, and so it might feel uncomfortable to wear that shirt. And the same is true if you are non-binary and you want to wear a boy's shirt, but you have a girl's body. It should just be that there are shirts that everyone can wear, like shirts in a boy's cut that are normally in the girl's section and shirts in a girl's cut that are normal in the boys. I have also had experience with clothes being challenging because when I was 10, I was diagnosed with osteomyelitis, which we later figured out that I actually had chromo, also known as chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis, which is a condition where my immune system eats my bones and destroys them. And so I needed to have a biopsy and a pick line. A pick line is this really long IV that goes into your arm and stays in there for a couple months and that meant I couldn't really lift my arm and so it made it very hard to put on shirts and take off shirts and so my grandma my mom and I came up with this shirt design that has a zipper down the side and velcro on the sleeve so that I could unvelcro the sleeve and unzip the shirt and take it off really easily and it also made it really easy for anyone who needed to get to the pick line quickly to get to it but we'd never had that situation that somebody needed to get to the pick line very fast which was lucky okay let me go back to your presentation rosemary i'm here okay sorry that's okay I'm gonna stop sharing the screen, okay? Okay. Sorry, I'm getting, I don't see you. So, um, so uh, it, Rosemary, are you open to taking a couple of questions from um, the school board? Yes, I am. About your project? If anybody has any questions, um, Rosemary uh, handled quite a few on the day she presented to her peers and, and some adults. So yeah. Anyone has Don't come questions. ask questions at me. <laughs> I'll ask a question. I have a little practice. I, I came in one of the days and yes. saw some of the Shark Tank projects, and it was so much fun. I wish I'd seen yours. My mom's um, not mine, so. This is, this is amazing, Rosemary. I just, I'm so impressed. This is such a cool idea. And I'm just wondering, how would you, how would you produce the clothes? Where would they be produced? Uh, so it would be a, uh, like, home business. So I would need, like, a sewing machine and some, a print, a color printer, maybe even um, something to do some picture scanning so that I can scan it and print it onto shirts easier because what we are doing right now currently is peeling off the shirt. So we have to figure out another way for that. But, um, and uh, I was hoping to do like start with like a hundred shirts a week, me making them, which would be a lot along with school. But if I didn't have school, that's what I would do. If thinking of school logically, I'd say about, maybe 10, 15 shirts a week and I'd make them at home and I would buy shirts in bulk and then I could design them to fit other people's needs. Like I could take out seams and resew them and that kind of stuff. So. 
Cool. It's a great idea. Yeah. Um, someone raised their hand. Yeah, I can take that. Great. Wonderful job, Rosemary. I love it. Thank you. And um, question, because Mr. Butts had mentioned that it started like as a comic book project. Yes. So how was the comic book connection? Like, what, how did that work? There was none. <laughs> so my <laughs> comic You just ignored his rules and just went for it? I, kind of. <laughs> I didn't act. Okay. I was making a superhero in art class, which is where we were supposed to design it from. But I didn't. A lot of my uh, like appointments and stuff actually coincided with my art classes and that kind of stuff. So I was not done with my superhero yet. And I knew my superhero sort of. So like I knew the gist of it, but I didn't want to do that. I was having a hard time figuring out what to do that could coincide with my superhero. So I thought, why don't I just make a whole new superhero or like one that fights for equality, but then it kind of stride away from that superhero because I was like, I can do that. But then I just drew that logo and decided I wanted to do that <laughs> instead. And Mr. Butts was kind of like, yeah, just go for it. So I just <laughs> went for it. And yeah, I kind of disobeyed him. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Butts. But that sounds like a great decision. Well, no, that sounds like you're <laughs> taking control of your learning, which is exactly yeah. what you want to do with these things. That's yeah. awesome. Great. All right. Well, Rosemary, thank you for coming and presenting. No um, problem your project tonight. We're very impressed with it. And thank you, Mr. Yeah. Butts, for coming to support Rosemary. Yeah. You did a great job, Rosemary. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Thanks, Thanks Rosemary. All right. I don't know that I'm sharing the right tab. Am I, am I back to my presentation? Yeah. I think yeah. you are. Okay. So you, all right. Okay. I'm on hiring updates. That's what you see. Um, a couple of, uh, just uh, updates in the hiring realm. We we did um, manage to uh, score a support staff member named Kayla Klein. She started today and um, she's just getting to know the kids and the schedule and the staff um, and the special ed case managers will place her accordingly. So we feel pretty fortunate about that. Um, we did, I, I did hire um, Dan Talbot. He's a local well, he used to be a local Heartland resident and he's moving back and he should be starting this week and um, Chad's baby should be born this week. So uh, hopefully it'll all line up. Um, we posted the second grade position because it was um, a late hire and that's what we have to do. And so we're currently interviewing for that position. And um, if we get good news tonight, we'll post the third grade position tonight or tomorrow morning after the budget passes. So um those are the hiring updates for this month. Um, COVID update, certainly cases are on the decline in our schools, which feels which feels great. It feels all of a sudden, which is a little bit strange, but um, we're happy about it. As you probably have seen or heard or gotten the surveys, we're surveying parents, staff, um, and staff to collect data on how people feel about masking or unmasking um, and a plan for doing that. We had surveyed the staff, but our survey wasn't um, specific enough. So we're, we're sending out a new survey for, for them to fill out that I think mirrors the, the parent survey. Um, some of you were at the board meeting this month, I think last week, and um, there was a decision that be an additional SU board meeting this month on March 21st to discuss uh, this issue and to allow the public to come and share their thoughts and opinions on how and when we unmask our kids and our staff. And the administrative team is kind of rolling out. We wanna be strategic and thoughtful and smart about um, our plan to open things up, including the uh, unmasking. And so we're working on a, a plan for that. I think one of those I can share, we've talked about um, having an optional in-person or remote parent-teacher conference. Uh, in about a month from now. So we're feeling that might be a good step in the right direction. Any questions or comments about COVID? We're still, we're still having cases here and there, but they're not um, anywhere as near as we, as many as we were having uh, just a month ago. All right. Um, last month you asked, oh, was there a question? Yep. Colleen. Go ahead, Colleen. Have you, have the teachers been talking some about? 
I mean, you just kind of said that, but you're uh, talking about uh, strategies for opening mm-hmm. up. What kinds of things have come up in conversation, I guess, is what I was wondering. Um, we've talked about mixing, a little bit of mixing of the pods, um, mixing for, uh, we're actually, Heartland's going to have a drama production this spring, which we're very happy about. It's it's later in the season, Great. we're kind of waiting, waiting to see and allowing kids from other schools that don't have a drama program to join. We've talked about a slow, maybe opening of the cafeteria just for the grade level, um, which we started at the beginning of the year at, in Heartland. And it's different in every school, Colleen, just based on yeah. based resources. Um, but having at least eighth graders ha- be able to have lunch together in the, um, we call it the dining hall in the next few, in the next few weeks. Um, those are some of the things we've talked about. Maybe uh, when we do unmask, do we do it all at once? Do we do an hour at the end of the day? Do we distance kids when we're doing it just to see how it goes? So those are the kinds of things we're, we're talking about and thinking about. Uh, one other one that comes to mind is um, an eighth grade trip. So we haven't fundraised, mm-hmm. but we're going to try to... Um, raise some money quickly and at least let our kids go on an end of the year trip uh, day trip somewhere because they, they, they deserve it. Um, so things like that. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. It does. We do, we do want to get back to normal, but we're, we're being cautious and people, you know, some people are more comfortable than other people. Right. Around the issue. Um, That's just going to be yeah. true. Yeah. So you. um, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the winter data, I, I did collect a little bit. It, it We just finished up exact path. So um, I haven't had a, a ton of time to dive in and examine it, but I can certainly present it tonight. And it will be quick. I tried to get it all kind of in a, a way that makes sense for you to see. But it's got to load. <clears throat> All right. Can you see it? I always get this note that says share this tab instead. I think I have to hit that. Am I good? Got it now. Okay. All right. So um, just thought that I would share the attendance data because I think it's important and it certainly impacts our our, um, assessment scores and how kids are doing and the number of kids that have taken some of the assessments. So these are the rates for the year. Certainly we had a spike in December and January, hoping February, it'll start to come down, um, but don't have that data run yet. Um, Track my progress data. I I took um, the percent proficient and uh, gave it to you by whole school and individual grade level from the fall to the winter. So the reason there's only one kindergarten line for winter is we didn't we didn't put them through it in the fall, which is a a, a decision that we make. We think that's best practice for our, our youngest learners. So overall in ELA, the school has made progress. If if um if there's n- not an increase, that's still progress because the test gets harder as the kids get older. Um, the the benchmarks increase. So there are a couple um, grade levels that went down. And so that's something to think about and look into and dive into with our interventionists and our MTSS teams. So that's ELA. Any questions, specific questions I can try to answer? Okay. Uh, I I always think it's important to look at free and reduced versus non-free and reduced. And we continue to see a pattern where our non-free and reduced students score better than our free and reduced kids and that's the achievement gap that we're trying to close didn't really make much progress from the fall to the winter so but something we're always thinking about um and males versus females so in ela our females outscore our males by a considerable um amount And, and this is the whole school broken down by grade level math data. Again, we've made progress as a whole school and, and most classes increased their scores. A couple, a couple didn't. And again, some of that was based on attendance and 
and COVID and, and just, you know, di different factors. All right. Um, and again, free and reduced and non-free and reduced. Similar, similar trends as uh, we saw in ELA. And then males versus females. So the females are, are scoring a little higher, but not, not as significantly as in ELA. Is that, um, is that a developmental thing? Because girls are, I just think that part of ELA is making arguments and, um, mm -hmm. and that, so it, it makes me wonder if that's a girls just developing and having more social drive that, yeah scores i don't know i mean i would say in and this is just from my own experience in the classroom um it, it's very typical to notice that girls are more are wired in a way that suits traditional schooling more so than males so they they seem to be able to attend more <laughs> does, does that make sense and i think that attributes that to sense. it yeah yep. all right so that's tmp um the exact path data just came in. I was looking at it with um, Brittany just yesterday. And as you know, exact path is a little bit, uh, well, we're, we're looking into it. I'll say that to see if it's an effective um, tool for us. The um, curriculum assessment, instruction and assessment team came in and interviewed students and staff had a chance to weigh in on how it's going. They will report out their findings, I believe at that next SU board meeting. But um, I will say the scores in exact path don't look as good as TMP. Um, this is math. And as you can see, as a whole school, the scores, the percent for proficient de decreased. And that was true in quite a few of the grade levels. In the older, in the older middle level, they, they, they did go up. Um, I talked to Brittany about this and kind of, made some uh, hypothesis on why that might be. Some of what um, we came up with were the kids are really not buying into exact path. They really have a negative feel about it. So they're not trying very hard on the assessments. Um, another potential indicator or, or contributor is that the test, the diagnostic test is taking kids way, way too long, way much, uh, a lot longer than it should. And so kids just, you know, it, it's too long and, and they don't, they don't attend all the way through. And we had a lot of absences. So the data is a bit skewed because some kids didn't take it in the fall and some kids didn't take it in the winter and they're not the same kids. So it does, it does skew your data a bit. So the math was, I think the worst, um, this was free and reduced versus non-free and reduced. And um, this is reading. We did a, a little bit better in reading on exact path. Whole school wide, we in, in, increased a bit. And the same is true in, um, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. This is free and reduced versus non-free and reduced. And then in language arts, a, a slight increase in the whole school data as well. So that is the, current um those are the current percentages for track my progress exact path and and attendance so and and those i shared with you already um questions comments i think from what i've heard um of kids that i've talked to yeah um, the, Oops. It, it, it seems like your uh, theory of kids not trying very hard in the winter <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I heard a lot of car conversations of, oh, I just clicked right through. Yeah. And you can tell, sorry, I stopped sharing. I don't know why. Um, uh, one, one teacher told me, because I was asking a couple questions, that, that there were kids that finished the whole assessment in, you know, under two minutes. So clearly they're not trying. <laughs> at all and we can make them go back and do it but um and we do in some cases and one student said oh i didn't know you looked at the the scores <laughs> so 
that teacher is is making a plan to set goals based on the data with all her students for the next round, which is good. Um, and I will say the interventionists are doing data deep dives with their teams. They're looking at the the grade level data and they're setting a goal and then they come back and, and then they work on that goal and then they come back and um, revisit to see how they've done. So we are getting in the habit of, of consciously looking at data regularly and getting staff to do that. So that's a good thing that's that's come out of it, I think. Um, and you'll you'll hear more about exact path. I don't know if other schools are having the same feelings about it. Um, so that'll be interesting to hear. All right, um, me... So I'm going to go in order because we have a lot. So it's Sarah, Scott, and then Colleen. Okay. Go Sarah. So um, so are they done with exact path now? Like they won't have to do exact path the rest of the year. So that is undecided, Sarah. I think, and Angie can confirm. Um, I know it's in the, comp uh, the the comprehensive assessment plan that we have for the year, but so is TMP for the spring. And what we were thinking was, because um, we did pilot exact path. I mean, it was piloted and selected. So it's kind of like, do you just throw it away, to, you know, early or do you continue with it and, and kids get used to it? Or But if it's not the right tools, you know, we have to determine that. And I think that decision will drive whether they take the spring assessment and Angie please um, help me because I I'm just guessing on this one yeah so we the exact path adoption committee well the diagnostic software adoption committee met this afternoon okay. and we and the committee came up with a recommendation for the administrative team to consider um, and that's all I I think I should share right now um, the uh, and uh, just to clarify, many of the we saw many common um, commonalities in children's experience and teachers' experience across the supervis supervisory unit. Well, thanks for that. I wasn't sure if it was just a Heartland thing. You know, you never know. <laughs> well, that we'll we'll look forward to hearing um, some of the results next. I think it's next month. You're you're presenting, Angie. Yes. Okay. I, and I did, I did, I know I've been a bit of a gadfly on this, um, but I did want to say that I, I, I appreciated and I, the kids really appreciated that you all went to them and, and asked for their opinions. And, um, you know, I, my kid wrote a, an essay to <laughs> explain why she didn't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she and her friends made a PowerPoint. And you know what? I mean, that was kind of a great experience. And she felt very empowered. And I think they all felt very empowered to sort of share how how they were feeling about it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so, you, you know, you, you, you know how I feel, but I, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate that you, you empowered them to express their feelings about it. <laughs> And, and we did get feedback, I will say, the next day after Angie, Patty, and Brittany came and did the interviews. And they spent a, a day at Heartland, um, a good portion of a day interviewing kids. Um, we got a very nice email that said that the Heartland kids were so respectful and articulate. And they really, uh, you know, appreciated spending time with them and, and the feedback that they got. So that was nice to hear. So passing that along. Scott, I think you're up. Okay. Yeah, my comment is actually going to take us a little sideways and I'll go as quickly as I can, but I'm going to, it has to do with the FRL and, mm. and that jo jogged my memory. And then a week ago, we had a specific question about that at our, at our annual district information meeting from a resident first name, Chuck. And I wish that I had, was more, I was better at, thinking on my feet. So I wish that I had spoke up then, but maybe Chuck will watch this video. And um, I thought maybe we could, you know, he, he had some good questions, but I think that there was a little confusion about the school's role there. I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but just, just to clarify, you know, we're trying to identify, it's really a problem um, and a challenge for us, I mean, to identify the students and we never think that we really get all the students identified is my experience. And it's, and it's bad for, uh, 
it's probably bad for the individual students, um, but it's also a bummer for the school not to have the, the ratios or the correct numbers um, mm -hmm. as clear as possible for th that um, enables those titles monies that come along with with identifying those numbers. So I just, I don't know, the way I remember that comment from a week ago was that maybe the school district ought to be working with the town to figure out why there was this population in our community, or, or excuse me, um, perhaps why that number was increasing in our community. Is that is that a fair yeah. estimate of what was said a week ago? Mm -hmm. And I just think that um, I'm not sure that's really our role more. The school district's role is really providing for that population and uh, and by by law providing for that population. I don't know if anybody else has anything to say, but I, I said it was sideways and so. <laughs> okay. From my standpoint, because um, Christine and I were both on committees, mm -hmm. um, for like, I think it was like two years. I mean, it was yeah, an extended time. period of time that we were meeting um, on committees. But then um, I think the funding ran out maybe from Mount Scottney Health, like the time we hit the timeline and then things like we got things in and done by the timeline, but then we never came back together and summarized what we did. Um, and so when Chuck asked that question, I was kind of like, Okay, and I know we did this, but like I, there was no complete package at the end of this is what we accomplished out of those two years. Um, and it I'm really not, didn't, we didn't really answer his question, Nikki, either in our committees, like, or at yeah. least in my, my committee, we weren't looking at why the population of free and reduced is increasing in Heartland. I mean, I think, I mean, I, I don't know if your committee, I mean, I think your committee addressed zoning or, or you know, that realm. But I think it's a, it's a much larger question in the sense of, I don't think, mm. I mean, it's, it's not just us, you know, right. like it's not just our free and reduced numbers are going up and we need to do something about it. Yeah. Um, it's a much larger community than Heartland. So I don't think um, that we necessarily are, you know, like, yeah, it just seems like yeah, it, it's a huge, huge issue overall. Mm. Food insecurity, you know, the wealth gap is increasing. Like it's it's all of it, and that's and then it's just like, you know, microscopic down to all of it, and it's happening in Heartland. And so yeah. I don't I don't think of it as an anomaly or anything like that. I think it's just that it's happening here, just like uh, so many other places in the country, and that's, that we I'm can do our best to support that. it. Because I'm so focused on Heartland that I often forget to look. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a great comment, Beth. I'm glad you spoke up because I was thinking of your overlap here too with the um, with the universal meals conversation. And so one thing that I wished had been said was the challenge over the years of of really surfacing that that number in our school district and and just the, it's just been uh, you know for. All these years, in my, from my perspective, school leaders don't feel like they're really getting a good idea. And it's a challenge to get these silly papers returned. And that is, I mean, I- Yeah, I mean, then that's a, I, it's, I mean, it's a statewide my, issue. I yeah. mean, that's, it's not, that's not, and a nationwide issue. Like this is not, it's it's the same darn form used everywhere. But just to finish my thought, so, I'm getting out yeah. over my skis a little bit, but the, you know, there's other ways to find very similar mm -hmm. um, data or data that could help the school district as a whole know what kind of um, resources we needed to point in which direction. And, you know, data that didn't require um, parents filling out stuff that seemed kind of private and passing it on to school leaders. You know, there's other ways to figure that out. And that's one thing that goes along with the universal meals application process would be figuring out another way to do that. And I know New Hampshire is actually working on that right now of like to eliminate 
the the form and how can they eliminate mm-hmm. the form so it's worth looking across the river to see what they're up to but i know it's at the state level of like hunger free vermont and and vermont feed and all those folks are definitely um looking at it um it's 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 an awareness yeah but it's hard so so beth do you have a sense on the vermont side what i mean i know you you're probably not quite as in touch but what 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 do you know about the vermont side around universal lunch or new ways to fill out the frl application yeah there's not a new way in the sense of other than like you know we incorporated we now have a digital version of it (laughs) um and so that that's a big help for some and so i think that that's really helpful so just getting it as varied as possible right now is the best we can do um but i haven't heard you know anything else i mean the other thing is just like making sure that every social service agency that's working with us has these you know that that they know that this needs to be filled out Anyone at the food shelf, you know, like, and I mean, I know folks like within Heartland, maybe going to Haven and things like that and, and outside of town for, for the food shelf. And so they are really, you know, those places are also really good places to make sure that, you know, they have those, those resources. Um, and they do as far as I know, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I've changed district, but the problem's still the same up North. And, it's, 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 and, and Scott's absolutely right. It is it is really hard. And especially when you know kids need it, how do you approach the parents? And it's, it's really, it's very, um, yeah. it's just really True. complicated. And it's, we try, it's, it's, we try because we know they need it and we and we need the funding as well, but it, it, it doesn't feel good. So hopefully Scott, somebody comes up with a... <laughs> A different way, yeah. Yeah. Scott, I'm going to miss that insight. Um, yeah. Colleen, you're up. I'll continue with whatever insight I can give. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I still get a few end roads. So you have to channel your inner Scott in the next meetings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Send me notes ahead of time, Scott. <laughs> oh, Colleen, you're on mute, I think, yeah. I think she's done. I think she said she's all set. Oh, you're all set. Okay, we answered it. Okay. All right. Good. Let me finish my presentation. I don't know. Whoops, hold on. Were there any other questions about um your browser can't share your screen? That's weird. What did I do? Should be able to. Yeah, I should. I have it up on my screen. Do you want me to see if I can pull it up? That's so weird. Uh, yeah, it won't let me. I get, I'm getting a message. That's weird. Uh, yeah, I'm all, I mean, I'm almost done, but. Yeah. Uh, so can you. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki. Yep. I think I'm. All right. Book study. I just, I just added this. I forgot, Nikki, you'd asked about what we were going to kind of go for, how we were going to move this forward. And I wanted to share that um, we did. The administrative team had a. We had an actual full day mini retreat on the one of the half days and um, Angie and Brittany and Patty and um, and David really presented a, a model for professional development for next year that our staff has really been asking for, which is more um, gives them more voice and choice and ownership, which is what we're asking them to do for our children. So it, it's not all flushed out and we need, we need teachers and staff to be on a committee to really talk about it and how we're going to go about doing it. But one of the ideas was, um, it was related to our work around trauma and really identifying our, our top goals in our school. And that's based on our strategic plan work and how we're going to provide staff with professional development around those areas. And give them some voice and choice in that. So one of the ideas for this book, Nikki, was if, if staff are required to do so many hours uh, to meet this goal, learning around this particular goal, this book would be a, a, an amazing book study um, for a group to, to do. So we, we haven't forgotten about it. We're trying to just figure out a way without putting it on staff, but allowing them to choose if that's what they want to do. Um, so that's, that's a discussion we're, we're in the middle of at this point. I think that's great. Yeah. It's exciting. 
So guys, I just got word school budget passed by a lot. <laughs> oh, yay. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know. You didn't need to raise your hand for that. <laughs> I was, like, was, was going to like make a small change and hold it up or something. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. So, congrats, yeah. everybody. We can sleep tonight. Yay. That's awesome. <laughs> you can, uh, Christine, you have work to do. You have to hire a third grade teacher. I know. I know. I I've, got the, I've got the ad ready. I sent it to Lori today. I said, if it passes, can you post tomorrow? She said, yes, just let me know. So, so we're ready. So I'll keep you posted on that and the differentiated PD model because we're really excited about it. And it, it'll be a lot of work. We're looking at, um, we've done some webinars on some systems that will help the process. Um, I think what was it, frontline David, that we were looking at mm -hmm. to house our um, yeah. And I think yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty much been decided. Yeah. So it'll be um, it'll be used for uh, it'll it'll take the place of Ready Sub, which is what we use for subbing. It'll be our digital time card system. Uh, so it's all in one, which is which is going to be nice. Um, we'll, and we'll roll it out really slowly, <laughs> so people aren't overwhelmed. Um, if you yeah. ever want me to come in and do a short presentation, you once will. The school is open more. I'm happy to come over. Okay, that would be great. Okay, uh, yeah. Next slide. I just want to give you a heads up. Um, we have a space issue at Heartland. I don't know if you know that, but <laughs> space is a really hot commodity, and we're trying to be think outside the box. Um, and next year we will have an additional program in our school for. Uh, around uh, kindergarten early early ed ages of um it'll be a program for some autistic children that are going to be joining joining us and so we need a space for them we also have a as you know uh two of every grade in the elementary um realm next year so we've got to find a classroom for an additional grade grade level so we've got things to figure out but one thought was can we move crossfit to floral hall and so uh Jim and Joe came over and uh, we went out to Floral Hall. We brought Lacey and Chad, our, our CrossFit experts, and we looked at the space and we we think it might work. There is a heating, there is heat in there and there's electricity. It will need some cleaning and some work and probably some mats on the floor and um, and it, it'll just need some, co you know, cosmetic work and potentially it could be a space that would work, which we're excited about. We're just waiting on the uh, gym has to have clearance from the insurance company that is it is structural structurally sound so we should know by the end of the week and so if it is structural structurally sound we will likely be moving crossfit to floral hall over the summer so that we can have another classroom open um, next year so i just wanted to let you know that we're thinking about that that's great because we've been thinking about what to do with it for a long time and then it seems yeah. like it just all of a sudden made sense. Yeah. Yeah. If it works, it'll be great. So um, so I'll keep you posted as we move forward with that. Um, the next slide is super exciting. I, I think, I don't know that everybody knows this, but um, Jennifer Waite, and she did most of the work. I'll give her the credit. We She uh, works for Parks and National Parks and Rec Trails, I believe it's called, um, and applied for a grant and we got it. So we have um, $171,768 to build the ADA accessible trail into the 17 acre woods, which is really, really, really exciting. So we'll figure so out. Great. It, yeah, it, it really is great. There'll be some work to, that goes along with the grant management and whatnot, but Jennifer's going to help. So that will hopefully um, start this this summer. And I'm very, very excited. That's exciting. I looked, at, I looked at the awards too, and this is like the second or third highest grant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. so it's yeah. really a big deal that we got this. A lot grant. of money. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, it really. is. And, and we have the site plan. We had written a grant a few years ago for the site plan. And that is the amount listed. We're, we're thinking because of the cost of materials is higher now we might need to fundraise a little bit more money but we'll have a bulk of it so very exciting and then the last slide i think is just we did pick a graduate we did set graduation dates at our meeting this week and so heartland will 
graduate our eighth grade, eighth grade class on June 15th at four o'clock. We're hoping to be outside again. We really enjoyed being outside last year. So weather permitting, that's what we'll do. So, yeah. Any questions? That went well last year, the outside graduation. Yeah. What was the date again? I didn't get it for the minutes. June 15th. 4 p.m. Yeah. I'm adding it to my calendar right now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Let's take a moment. I want to do that too. <laughs> Let's all take a minute. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well done. Yes. Um, the one thing that I thought the graduation last year was amazing, except for the random wind gust. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> it got challenging in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that we could improve is um, speaker. Yeah. Do we have anything in the SU, or do we have something like? To me, I don't. I don't know how much it would cost to get something or rent something. Maybe it's worth looking at renting something. Mm -hmm. Might be worth it. Yeah. Especially I agree. If all the schools use it, or like, could we borrow from if Windsor has something? I, I don't know. But that, I really feel like we should make an improvement on that because it was really difficult to hear. Yeah, I agree. Let's talk to Jim, Christine, because I know Windsor yeah. always goes outside and it's a and it's a great system, but I think they contract that system out. And so we could get that contact, get a price and see if they'd be willing. Yep, I'll put it on my list. That's worth it. I think it is. Yeah. Kids deserve it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm that concludes my report. So David, you're up. Yeah, and I'm uh I'll be pretty quick because as usual, I like to go after Christine because she <laughs> basically covers everything in uh in her report. So that's always good. But we'll just Can everybody see that pretty much? Yep. And I just want to say, David, that um, I'm really impressed with the new slide decks that you've been presenting in the last couple of months. With the new what? With the slide decks that you've been presenting. Like, <laughs> it's just, yeah. you formalized your presentation. Um, I'm trying to formalize that. Maybe them. Christine's doing. But <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's Christine's influence. So I, <laughs> I do, I like it. So I just wanted to let you know that. It's, it's, it's proof you can teach an old dog new tricks, right? But that's that's good. No, I, 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 I've I uh, just got a few things. Um, we talked about this. Masking protocols will remain on the table for the issue. Meeting on the 21st, we're collecting data now, student surveys, staff surveys, um, and parent surveys, uh, looking at positivity rates, vaccination rates. I just did a little survey of surrounding districts to see what our surrounding partners are doing in the other districts. They're all pretty much right where we are. I sent a little bit of that data to the board chairs uh, today, um, but it'll all be collected and presented on the 21st. And, uh, and what I've tried to explain to people, and believe me, I think uh, because I probably send out those uh, email blasts every Friday, you know, I have uh, very proudly wear the badge of honor that I have become the face of, I think, the COVID, you know, protocols and, 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 and crisis. And, and so everybody thinks that I just have the ultimate power to just say tomorrow, kids don't need to be in masks. So I've had to really explain how that works. And what the law says, uh, VSA 16834, that the school boards have the duty of care responsibility. And the SU board did authorize uh, the day-to-day -day operations of the COVID protocols for me, but they specifically uh, followed the advice of the state on, mask man on the mask mandate and used the 80% benchmark and also on the mandatory staff vaccines. And I can't go back on either one of them without, you know, not that I think we should write this second, but it's got to be an SU board uh, decision. So, I, you know, luckily we've got good board members. They're all, we all pretty much stay on the same side. Um, Heartland certainly has been really good about it. West Winds has been good about it. Uh, Weathersfield, a little bit of kicking, but not bad. Windsor, surprisingly, is the, is the uh, community that's really, torn right right to the point of campaigning for a write-in candidate tonight that's 
you know, anti-mask. So, so we'll see what happens and uh, I, I, we'll keep you all posted. But you know what? The nice thing about a supervisor reunion are there are 12 board members representing four different towns and three different districts. So it's very hard to change the direction of an SU based on, you know, one person's voice or one district's voice or one board candidate's voice. So we'll just stay positive and keep keep moving ahead. As Christine said, case counts are low, but there's still no new guidance other than the 80% benchmark from the uh, Agency of Education. Christine mentioned too, we're slowly uh, relieving some of the restrictions, cafeteria, performances, cross pod work. Uh, I am, matter of fact, uh, Christine and Angela will be proud that I did work today on, on this phased approach to how we would back away from some of the restrictions, not just masking, but others like this. Uh, and I hope to have that ready for the SU board on the 21st as well, if not certainly on the 28th. And that's the step down plan that Christine talked about. And, uh, and I want the administrative team and our COVID task force to approve it before I go public with that. Just for giggles, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try it. Can everybody see that? So, uh, back on the masking thing, my only concern, and I know I've told you this before, but I'm going to say it publicly, is that um, the AOE is now more restrictive. The AOE guidance is more restrictive than the CDC. That's and correct. So, I'm just, I'm concerned that I, I'm con I think that they're probably going to do something quickly and March I hope so. is going to be way out in the distance. And yeah. so we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I hope so. Uh, because I think that that's, that's the, that's the divide right now. The divide is between the governor's office, the CDC and the, and the VDH and the AOE. I mean, and, and they've got to work that out because it puts all of us out here in the field in, in the soup. And that's not uh, literally, that's not good. But I agree with you, Nikki, completely. Can everybody see these vaccination rates? Yeah. And then Beth has her hand raised. Right, yeah. Beth. I'll just say the, the district I'm working for, we're, they're considering dropping it on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the problem with that. And I district. honestly don't know how I feel about that. I'm very. Well, no, I know. And, and again, remember that school is located in New Hampshire. And they, and they, what's so that? All of Vermont rules. You do well. Yeah. Well, when I re yeah. when I reached out to Barrett, Barrett said the governor has mandated that schools can no longer have mask mandates, so Rivendell has to go without a mask. Um, the high school. The high school, Maybe. exactly. Yeah, yeah. but I, but, but you I mean, think all the elementary schools are going to go too? That's. What, I mean, he just put out a. a they just did a um a, a su wide announcement. So okay, yeah, because at least in in the, in his communication to me, he said. It would be just Rivendell, just the middle school and high school. But you, but yeah, you, the, the note that went out, it was just that they were considering it, and so okay. they definitely yeah. didn't want to get people's you know hopes up or nervousness up. No, you know, no, it was, it was very well worded in that way. No, um, and and, and Bar Barrett, Barrett is very thorough. Yeah. I'm sure he'll he'll do it. He'll do it. Yeah. He'll do it right, and he'll do it carefully. Um, but yeah, uh, he are, was my. I guess the side question to this is just more around what are. The considerations with like the the early ed program, you know, because they're part of our district or, or supervisor union, and it's like they're they're four, like they can't be vaccinated. So That's exactly right. How That's does that exactly. like are they are you are we are we dealing with that as a total separate thing, or or are they just all going to be glommed in with the supervisory decision? Well, that's a good question. I mean, they would certainly be, they, they're certainly rolled into the Windsor decision. They're not figured into the vaccination rate because like you said, they're not even eligible, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that's that's part of the problem in Woodstock. It's part of the problem in Springfield because the early ed programs are in the buildings and that's, uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, but I, I, they, they have to be factored in. The CDC guidance doesn't put vaccine status, but they just say if you're in moderate or if you're in yellow or green, you don't need a mask. So we'll have to see how AOE and Vermont interprets that. Yeah, exactly. So and you can see, you can see that, you know, by building, I mean, Albert Bridge is, 
is probably the only one that's over 80 percent but that's because there are more adults than kids in that building so it skews the it skews the data but um you know it is what it is and and we'll 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 just deal with it on on the 21st any other questions about that sarah just um i watched the su board meeting which was really helpful to just to get a sense of the you know those parents um good, good. who's who spoke because i you know i've heard a couple of comments in heartland from parents I, I think from the same people that you all heard from um but i have not you know that was a real that was a little bit of a wake-up call um watching that meeting um but the you know just um I think just as a principle, it's really, really important that we don't communicate this as, you know, either we're dropping the mask mandate or we're not. Um, we, this always needs to be responsive to the conditions on the ground. And so it's not that we're dropping the mask mandate. It's not that we're, you know, taking off the masks. It's that we will likely through this, you know, endemic <laughs> era of this, be, you know, be going back and forth and there may be, there may be times when we're going to have to put them back on. And so it's just the communication that I've heard around this is really troubling because I think a, a lot of the parents just have this idea that somebody's going to sign something and it's no more masks forever. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, right? I know. Meanwhile, I know. There's, there's this new variant coming down, coming down the pike and um, we, it, it has, it has to be, responsive to the actual conditions on the ground. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I'm all in favor of getting rid of them when it's safe to do that. But people really need to understand that, that they may be back. And, <laughs> and that's, yeah. well, if you remember, Sarah, to that point, we, we, um, that's part of what we went through last spring, right into graduation. I and mean, we were just all getting excited about being back without masks and we, all the furniture out of those, you know, and then all of a sudden by August, we were slammed with the new variant. And it was just all with the, you know, with an increase, certainly in case count. So I, I get nervous about these ebbs and flows and dips and valleys. It's, it's just, it's, it's a very, and it's not a fun time to be in the school business or in the school administration business. It's oh. just, you know, who of us signed up to be immunologists and, monitoring COVID predictions. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to be the downer. I'm usually a glass half full guy, but this, this has been really, really depressing in the last couple of weeks, even more so because, you know, all of a sudden you've got one or two of these communities that are really divided. And, and that's sad because we haven't been there in a long time. Yep. I, yeah. I mean, I just think with our, with our communication to really emphasize that it's not a, it's not a dropping of the mask mandate that we're talking about. It's a, you know, ebb and flow may be a good way to yeah. describe it. We may be able to come up with some other language that just really sets expectations for the community. I agree. Where they I, need I to. agree. And I plan on sending something out. Uh, I waited till after today because of the voting, but I'll probably do a little early email blast with, with sort of trying to couch something like that, Sarah, that, you know, first of all, you know, reviewing again where we are and where we get our guidance and why we follow that. What, what gives the SU board? Cause I've gotten a lot of those questions who gives the board that authority. Well, okay. Yeah. So I have to quote the law and, and you know, it's like, yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to try to summarize again and just tell people just be patient. It's not, it's not, it's not black and white. It just isn't. Right. Scott. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really glad that Sarah went first and really helped me think about what I wanted to say. <laughs> so the um, David I, and board, I was I've been bothered by this um, duty of care, um, if that's the name of the law that David's been speaking about. Yeah, no, I don't understand why an issue like this, which Sarah so uh, articulately um illustrates need illustrated needs to be nimble the the school needs to be nimble going forward and so why is the board involved and i i can't make that i can't explain that to myself i just i can't understand why this is not 
just in the realm of school leaders and wh why the board would be in, in this kind of a decision process. But if it has to be, and I, I, so I'm curious, number one, with that question, what is that law, David? Where is it in Title 16? Can I find yeah, it? Yeah, it? in, it's in Title 16, 834. Okay. And it basically, it just says each school district and its employees owes its student a duty of ordinary care to prevent students from being exposed to unreasonable risks from which is foreseeable and that injury is likely to occur. Now, the board could, not that I'm asking for this, believe me, grant that authority to me, but right now they've been holding on to that, at least with vaccinations and with masking, they've been holding on to that. Um, and I just don't understand why why you say that. Where is the reference in our in our school district's minutes that yeah, you you look at the August 17th, I think it's 17th okay. or 18th minutes and and they all believe me, I've done the research on this and 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 uh, it, it was right around the time we voted the vaccine mandate in. <clears throat> also right around the time we looked at what reauthorizing me to handle the day to day issues, but also reinforcing the 80 percent benchmark uh, for uh, for masking and and so, so the mandatory vaccine on staff and the 80% benchmark support was clearly at the board level under this duty of care. It's complicated, but that's what it is. And, uh, and uh, I, so I maybe, think- So maybe the, uh, if you need a motion there on the 21st at that SU special meeting, maybe that could read perhaps in a way that was, you know, going forward, you and the admin team would have the authority to toggle back and forth between. Yeah, well, I think given what Sarah just said, there yeah. might need to be some of that flexibility. But uh, and again, I have broad shoulders, uh, maybe too broad sometimes. But uh, but I mean, it does put a lot of responsibility again on the administrative team, you know, and believe me, we've made a lot of day to day decisions about you know, cafeterias and lunches and, and uh, outdoor recesses and performance. And so we've, we've done a lot of that. Now, whether or not the administrative team or, or, or me, whether or not we, uh, you know, we would want that responsibility, I don't know. But I think your point's a good point, Sarah. How do you, how do you swing from, you know, from day to day, week to week, month to month? I mean, that's a, that's a very good point. And maybe something we got to think about on the 21st. Any other thoughts on that? Thank I you. I still don't think we're going to make it to the 21st. <laughs> hey, have, have confidence. I mean, I, I didn't know that we were going to make it to today, but I'll tell you, the, the parents, even the ones who have been outspoken, I mean, I think they, you know, and I've answered every single email I get, and I basically quote the statute and I talk about why you we have the authority and and I try to do it gently and so far people seem to be holding on at least till the 21st uh, so uh, so we'll see I just got a text too that the Weathersfield budget passed uh, handily so that's that's good to know that's two out of three right that's awesome that's, that's something good. that's usually a nail biter I know, I know, right to right to the end. Congrats. Um, all right. So, anybody else? Or we just keep going. Uh, let's go here and see what else. Hmm. Maybe I'm not going to keep going here. Let me go back here. Ah, I am frozen solid. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, we did. We talked about that already. The equity audit approval. I think this is good news. This. Supervisor Union uh, uh, approved the equity audit RFP. Uh, I think this is going to be critical to moving forward with our equity equity work. So uh, I'm just waiting to see what the outcome of the Springfield elections are today, because that's going to determine whether or not Zach McLaughlin, the superintendent on this, thinks we can partner. You know, we think if we do two districts or two SUs in, uh, or a district and an SU, we might attract, uh, we might attract, uh, you know, at a more ef uh, efficient or, or, or a better price, uh, 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 you know, somebody who can do this kind of work. But essentially, we'll be looking at things like policies, procedures, hiring practices, curriculum, um, 
and, and, and from an equity perspective. And the people that do this kind of work, they're good at it. They say they can do most of it remotely without a lot of encroachment on the district. They might, they may do one visit, but that's not critical. When, uh, when were you hoping to get this done? Well, that's a good point uh, because the equity audit timeline or in the RFP, it says that we would not start this work until uh, the next school year uh, because it's just, as you all know, there's a lot on everybody's plate and we want to we want to clear the decks, get everybody graduated uh, that needs to graduate and everybody resting. And then we'd start this work. But but the but the RFP, we hope to go out. Uh, as soon as April 1st, if not sooner. And that will give us a good baseline. That's the hope, right? Because what we don't want to do in my mind, and I'm an equity advocate for sure, but I don't want to solve problems that we don't have. Let's go, let's go after the right issues. And it's good to do that kind of a needs assessment first, I think. I'll keep you posted on that. To that end too, you may all forget this, but I told the SU, I, I don't know if I told the SU board yet, but I think I did that uh, that equity, that national equity cohort that I was nominated for and uh, and have be become a part of, we got derailed for a couple of years. I think we all know why. Uh, I, I took one trip down to New Orleans as part of this cohort. It was an incredible experience. I brought a lot back to our district and our SU. And uh, there is going to be another uh, another week long um, uh cohort activity in Mar end of March. Uh, and so I have to go to, uh, they pay all expenses paid. I go to San Diego, California. I really feel bad that I have to do that, but I'm going to go. Uh, and uh, and um, I'll, I'll certainly keep you posted on what I get. And I the plan is to certainly, we have two or three people, the most senior person, Angie Ledoux, with a superintendent's license. So I think during that time, uh, we'll ask her to step up. She very willingly has agreed to do that. Uh, Middle-level work continues. We've made some big decisions. I'll go over this in a little more detail at the issue board. I won't tonight, but we did come up with some common practices that we want to see employed around the SU. There are probably 30 people on this task force. They're all middle school teachers throughout the SU. And to get folks like that, Michael Butts is one of them. You know, he's one of the leaders, actually, uh, to agree on six or seven common common themes, uh, non-negotiables, if you will, uh, was good work. And, and one of them was that middle schools would be grades six through eight, which is going to be a little different for some of our schools, not so much for Heartland. I, I don't know. At some point, Christine will explain the ramifications for Heartland, but uh, it, it, it won't be that we'll be mixing sixth graders just, you know, multi-age at random with seventh and eighth graders, but it will mean that we'll be doing more activities together as a middle school. And so it'll be sort of like still a self-contained grade at grade six, but they'll slowly, as the year develops, start to do more activities and projects with the middle school. And we'll talk more about that when we have a little bit more time. March 11th in-service is coming up. That's going to be a wellness in-service and self-directed. Uh, we're really trying to uh, um, be sensitive to staff, but Craig's going to put on a breakfast. I think you might have already talked about this, Christine, and and then and then Angie and Brittany and the, and the administrative team have a great day planned for everybody. And did you mention this, Christine, in your report, the free lunch Wednesdays? I did not. I saved it for you, David. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But that was, uh, you know, we're just trying to find ways that are, you know, uh, somewhat cost neutral, not completely that, that we could, uh, that we could invest in our staff. So starting this Wednesday, tomorrow, uh, every, every staff member will be able to eat, eat free. Um, uh, and we don't know how many that's going to be. Craig's going to keep an eye on it. We don't think it's going to be tons of people, but we just thought it was a nice benefit for the work our teachers have done. Uh, budget votes today, and we're two for three, right? So uh, that's good news. Congratulations to Heartland and um, and Weathersfield. I'm sure we'll hear about, I'm sure we'll hear about uh, Windsor here in just a few minutes.
So if there are any questions, certainly I can take them, but uh, let me just see if I have anything from, uh, nope, nothing from Windsor yet. So it's always a big night for everybody. Okay, so now we're on to um, items for discussion. Um, so I think Christine kind of already covered this, but we have feedback and ideas for um, the book report that I gave last month on Nowhere to Hide. Um, and the one thing, um, the one comment that I would have is, um, I know that we tried to, and I don't remember where it came out, um, with the support staff contract, I know we tried to get a day of training in, um, and I feel like this is kind of where it, I think this is a huge piece of the training that needs to go in, and I don't know, did we get that day of training in, and... I think we did, David. Didn't didn't we negotiate more days for support staff in the in the? Yes, we did. Yeah. We did. I think we were able to. I think we added three days. Quite frankly, yeah. So that was, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we'll have to. I keep forgetting to do this, but Scott. The, well, I, and it was part of the presentation too, but I. I figured it was redundant because we had talked about this, but the support staff contract has been ratified by the association. I keep forgetting that we're supposed to ratify it uh, too as boards, but we can we can do that at the next meeting. We don't have to do that uh, tonight. Um, it, 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 it really went quickly, not a lot of changes, just a good healthy salary increase for, the, for those who are really um, our lowest paid workers and uh, we came up with a 403B contribution for them too. We thought that was fair. If teachers had it, they should have it. Um, and then the extra in-service days. That was about it, quite frankly. And no, the other big one was the, uh, we did uh, the cafeteria workers now will all operate under one uh, collective bargaining unit at the SU. So, so that means, you know, that uh, if, if Craig needed to move somebody over to Windsor or vice versa, it puts it all there. And we tried to get the maintenance staff too, but we couldn't do that. So if if somebody wanted to vote to ratify, we certainly could tonight, but we don't have to do that tonight. I feel like that's something that probably should be on the agenda. Yeah, we'll put it on the agenda for that. Just, just re one of you remind Lori to, to get it on for that March agenda so i'll put it under setting the next agenda vote thank you good good support and we're going to miss scott on the negotiating team too uh-huh yeah we're gonna have to have some discussions here team yeah so, <laughs> so so nikki the answer to your question is yes we did get the days and i think that i think the beginning of the book study on the administrative teams part and some of us i don't know if all of us have read the book and i think that the next step then is to really break that into into its 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 moving parts, and then especially with those who work closest with the kids, get get those get those uh, get those finer points, including yeah. a lot of what you can you put in your PowerPoint. I mean, I think you know you've done a lot of the work for us, so thank you, and we'll yeah. we'll, just, we'll figure out a way to. To get the time to do that, I feel like there's been a lot of the teachers have done the trauma informed work, yeah. um, but it hasn't percolated down, and that's where I think our kids are getting really hitting roadblocks sometimes. So, um, okay, anything else on that topic? Okay, uh, so we have building committee next steps. Sarah, are you going to lead up that discussion? Sure. Um, so, you know, we had we had met a couple of times and had some initial discussions about um, sort of priorities for if, you know, if if there was money, what we would spend it on in the building, I think is sort of a fair way to describe what our conversations were. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, I, I hope it wasn't me dropping the ball. It, it felt like we got hit with a lot of stuff there um, all at once. And it just seemed like it made sense to uh, kind of give it a rest. I think also we, you know, as we started to talk about communicating to our community that there were these needs and that maybe there might be a, you know, a bond at some point in the future. 
um, we got a little bit of pushback. <laughs> and um, So it just seemed like a good moment to kind of let things rest. And um, the administrators had a lot on their plates and uh, we all did. So, um, so yeah, so, so this is probably a good moment to just kind of say, what's what you know what's the way forward one one thing that i thought might be useful um is if you know i'm i'm happy to write something up and then the committee can take a look at it but just to kind of produce a document that that would contain what we talked about um so that you know for for future boards um that you know that there's just a kind of a record um we don't have a uh a building plan, I think, on the books right now, right? We had one from, I mean, it's got to be 10 years, 10 years old at this point, o older, maybe 15, we, we thought. So that might be just to get a document produced, that might be useful. Um, but I, you know, I'm anxious to hear what, Christine, certainly what, what, what you think and, um, and, and Nikki and the other board members, um, you know, I'm happy to, to move forward. However, we think is useful. I think that would be helpful, Sarah, just to get it on the books. I don't know that, um, I think my recollection is very similar to yours. And it also felt like it might be a hard sell with our declining enrollment. Um, right. To, to really, you know, timing is everything. Uh, so I would say with the with the project um, in the 17 acre woods, I know that's gonna occupy some of my time um, and might be the next step before before a, b a bigger building project. I don't know, just yep. kind of brainstorming out loud. Um, but I do know there'll be there'll be some oversight of the, of the work and the grant and Jennifer and I have a meeting scheduled already in the next couple of weeks to kind of start talking about what that's going to look like. So, yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are. Nikki, you were on that committee and Lindsay was on that committee, I think as well. Yep. Um, I mean, you guys always know that I have a lot of thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, as I mean, I think that we still, so I completely agree with the declining enrollment mm -hmm. um, and um, the selling building upgrades is challenging. Um, but we do have an old building um, that hasn't seen upgrades and is in some cases, I mean, the, the Kappa Gymatorium is definitely failing us. Um, and COVID saved the Kappa Gymatorium from the debate. But as soon as we go back to normal, we're going to start complaining about that again. Um, so I do kind of see that as one of our... Um, something that is going to have to be addressed eventually. Um, I also, um, you know, we, COVID also um, put the kibosh on um, building safety in some ways because all the doors are open now. Um, but I suspect that long-term that that's going to come back as well. And um, we start mm -hmm. with our front entrance and our sight lines and um, access through the building. Um, so I think that all those things need to stay on our radar. Yeah. Um, but so I completely agree that the woods is our next priority. Um, and, but one that I would like to see um, is some way that we could maybe make an outdoor eating space. Um, mm. Like some cost effective way that we could uh ease a little bit of the cafe gymatorium on nice days um, and get the kids outside. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, I think I, I would agree. We, we talked about that too, building a, almost like a patio outside with some tables. Yeah. And um, so I'll write, I, I put that on my list as well. I feel like that's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's simple because it's not simple. Um, no, it might not be too hard. It's not the most, it's not going to cost us the most out of everything that we talked about. Um, it relieves a little bit of our issues um, and it, it improves life for everybody. Mm -hmm. A patio outside would be spectacular when I was in school. Like I just felt like I got trapped in the building and never yeah. see the outdoors. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
We did, I did. I did talk to Craig just so you know about. Um, <laughs> We are getting a new service line now. I can say that, right? Um, you can. Yeah. Whether or not it made sense to think about the flow, because one of our issues is that long line in. There's only one way in and one way out. Um, so if it isn't that expensive to put a, a central door and have two lines coming in, hot, cold, and coming out. So J Jim's going to look into that. I don't know. It might be way, it might be expensive and it's a no not going to happen but if it's something that we can inexpensively do it would make sense to do it prior to buying the service line so that we can set it up right yeah set it up right set it up yeah. right yeah and that, that's yeah. exactly how i think weathersfield and windsor are both laid out that way but I, I think it would be a good it would be a good idea to to, to at least look at i don't think it's going to be as expensive as you think christine and one of the things i thought not to get too cocky on budget night but um you know, if we're carrying a good surplus and that really is an important project, you know, that's something you could do in June and mm -hmm. it's done and you kind of, you kind of move, yeah. move forward with it. But uh, I, I agree. The, um, totally a board the, decision. The, the other thing that I think um, it's just something I've been thinking a lot about um, on I, on the library board, you know, we were, we were due to do a strategic plan, and we we sort of talked about the fact that it's really hard at this moment in time to 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 plan ahead uh, because we just yeah. don't we just don't know what what the lessons of the pandemic will be. We don't know how things will change, and I think a lot of those we had some very exciting conversations about the building and about you know changing the way we use space and. But it's funny looking at it now. It just the the future feels a little murky, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit hard to to kind of say, you know, yeah, let's build a new wing or let's do this because I feel like we just don't know. And so it seems like a good moment to kind of, you know, maybe create a document with what we have discussed, mm -hmm. get some of these things in it, um, and you know, as as Nikki says, make sure that we include in that document that security may once again be a big issue and we, and we need to be ready to address that. Um, but, and then maybe wait a little, wait a little bit and kind of see how, how things go in the next year. I like that. And you might as well add the floral hall update. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and David and I talked about that too, if there is excess money that it, in the budget. I mean, we didn't put any money in the budget for next year for Floral Hall. And it's not going to be a major renovation, but it is going to be like clean it out, paint the walls. Yep. There's a section in there where there's a makeshift wall where it was divided that will need to come down. So it, it'll, it'll be, you know, it'll cost something. I, I think that's what Jim and his, and his crew yeah. can do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be good. Um, is he, yeah. is he, is he, I'm sorry, Scott. I, I didn't know if there's, there's heat and electricity out there. You said that, right, Christine? There is. Yeah, no, we were yeah. pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's heat out here. Plus, it's CrossFit, so it doesn't need to be hot. You know, it needs to be cool because the kids are working out. So it would have made a nice sugar shack too, Scott. But yeah. I couldn't talk her into that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that again. Sarah reminded me of something that's been on my mind. I'm fascinated by the um, discussion perhaps globally about what are, what are we going back to and do we want to just quote, go back to where we used to be two years ago. And it, I think it's pretty clear that people don't want to for all kinds of um, equity reasons and uh, all kinds of reasons. And, and so maybe, Maybe it's not a pro maybe it's not clear, but you know, drilling down on that concept in use of the Kappa Gymatorium, it, it's interesting to me that somehow it was made to work. I wish I knew more about that right now. Is it is it eating in the classrooms that has made that taken the pressure off that space? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's a pro that's a problem for the maintenance department, I guess, and and the and the cadence of the rest of the day. But, um, anyways, it it's it, it has proven that you can. There's more than one way to skin a cat. So, um, I also think that the uh, 
not forgetting the security concerns is yeah and, and the other thing that hasn't been mentioned yet is we keep we keep as a board we and then you get uh was it with jeff marino we, have, we did have a plan i'm not sure yeah yeah christine if it was a whole building plan or not but mm -hmm. there's some document there is not it's not 10 or 15 years old yet but um you know the question seemed to come back again to oh the building is not completely sprinkled and if we do any construction we'll have to and i just think that's like uh, what's the what's the term a nothing burger I, I i would be all for like that plumbing project you know it would be expensive but um i think the building is uh worth protecting against fire if you want to put it that way mm -hmm. for, for gosh sakes <clears throat> Yeah. I'll speak to that as somebody who's elementary school bird now. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> it's sad. I'll just say, uh, put a plug in for, there's a kind of a movement called Smarter Lunchrooms. And so um, however we can support Craig and his staff and any of the maintenance staff, like before you start blowing holes through walls or anything like that, like just really thinking about how, the main mission of this is to get as many children fed a healthy, nutritious meal as possible. So yeah. how, how are these renovations just constantly doing that? And what are the small tweaks we can make, even if we can't blow that hole through the wall if we need to, um, what are those other small things? So just like, kind of like what you're saying, Scott, don't let these huge things, you know, be in our way for making some really smart decisions around that. So yeah. there's Good a point. lot of professional development around smarter lunchrooms and what they, what you can do. Yeah, that's true. And I know Craig's working on that in Windsor too. I mean, for a very small car, I think the total was like 20,000 to, you know, murals on walls and different kinds of tables and chairs. I mean, just to make it, you know, less institutional. So I, I think that's right. We, we need to be yeah, smart. And, and thinking about it as like, you're going to a restaurant and you're picking out food. Like, you know, you're not, right. this is not, this isn't jail. <laughs> like the kids have choices. Amen. <laughs> Making sure it feels that way. Um, good point. And that they're treating being treated well as customers and that's and also the choices that are the healthy choices are the easiest choices to make that's a good point i i also think it might be worth um at some point surveying kids and uh, you know it, it, i i create so many problems with the teachers and the classrooms getting breaks and but kids feel very positively about eating in their classrooms or outside. And I think that is something that we need. And I know it, it doesn't fit in necessarily with the, you know, the food program in certain ways, but socially, emotionally, um, you know, I just, when I hear kids talking about it, that's one of the things that they've loved about the last two years. And I think, especially for kids who, you know, who have some social awkwardness and who, you know, it's it's a relief not to have to walk into a cafeteria and they're dreading going back to, <laughs> to that. So oh, I, yeah. I, I want to make that part. I know that I know it's, it's, no, I think Sarah, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's some great points yeah. in that. And I think, especially if we stay with universal meals, I think there's some research to do around this, but there's ways to actually serve meals as a family style. Yeah. And so you're actually, sitting down as a classroom and eating a meal together instead of, and that was the problem. Like, yes, it was nice for everyone eating their, their lunches in the classroom, but the majority of students were sitting there and watching a video and asked to stay, you know, facing forward, not interacting and not having those kinds of, yeah. because yeah. they couldn't. So now is the time to start thinking about as we can restrict these things, but if we're staying in the classroom, how can we support teachers and aides to really start having this as a, discussion. Hey, did you try this? Did you like that? What does this look like? Like just starting to have more of a, a family kind of supportive feel around food. Um, yep. I think would be really amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep us moving. Um, do, Sarah, do you feel like, are you all yeah. set with the building committee? Yeah. So uh, I think I'll, I'll draft something that I can share with, um, with you and, and we can kind of go from there, but I think that makes sense to, to kind of, Produce something and then pause a little bit and see how things go. That's a good plan. 
Um, so uh, our next is items for action, and I don't believe we have any today. Um, usually where we no. to vote on things in case we didn't already. Um, so setting the next agenda, um, we need the principal's report and the superintendent's report. Rat and ratify the contract. And ratify the contract. Um, so we're going to need a special session. Everybody pull out the calendars. We're going to need a special session um, before the SU meeting to um, <clears throat> put together an SU board <laughs> um, because we can't do that today because nobody's been elected or sworn in. Yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah, and so we need to reorganize um, but we can't wait until our next meeting to reorganize because we have an SU meeting in between. Um, normally we would meet after, far enough after town meeting that we would be able to reorganize, but that didn't happen this month. Um, so what do, what do people want to do? It should be a pretty quick meeting. Um, yeah. And you said it has to be before the 21st, right? Yeah, I think we should make it as soon as possible, but David knows my opinion on this. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like we should have our SU representatives selected as soon as possible. Um, yeah, I, I agree. The, the day that's open next week is the 9th. Okay. It's going to make a busy week, but, uh, and then we could do any 14th, 15th, or 16th the following week. I would take the 9th. Or, I mean, how long are we talking here? Uh, I bet, we, I bet we, an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, we've reordered the restructuring part. meeting just for us to restructure. Yeah, you no, want to do reorganization, but we probably should. Um, so we like may put something else on the agenda, which we can talk about. So then we set aside the, time on the 8th. I have it. Do you have no, time to think, start on the 8th? No, I, I don't have anything on the eighth. Okay. I could do the I could do the eighth. The ninth is dicey. Okay, I can Anyone do either. You have, you have stuff on the eighth. We could also do the tenth. Let's see. Tenth is good. I might. We have to might. We might have to start at seven on the tenth. Well, it's going to be. I think it will be I quick. Do I think it's better for me. Because you know what, uh, 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 Christine and I don't, we, since we gave our March reports, I'm not sure yeah. we need to do that again. I think it's reorganizing, ratifying the master, the support staff agreement, and, you know, maybe just, I don't think you'll be ready, Sarah, with your written report on the buildings yet, right? No, so, that's all for the next meeting. Uh, we'll just keep that later on. I, I, I think, think we can do, the, if we start at seven, we could that we could just do the reorganization and push everything else to the April meeting. That's fine yeah. too. That's fine too. But there may be one other thing that comes up that yeah. we will talk about in a minute. Um, so. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Any of so those evenings day, look fine to me. Which day are we picking? David, you have something on the 8th? I have the 8th is the Weathersfield School Board meeting. The 7th is the Mount Scutney School Board. And they're both doing their organizational meetings and they've got agenda items. Right. But I've got the ninth or 10th or, I mean, you could meet without me. I mean, if it's only reorganizing, but I would have to set that meeting up or Christine would have to set it up and she'd have to own it. Yeah. Um, well, how about the ninth? What does the ninth look like? I think that was tricky for Sarah. Yeah, it's a little tricky for me too. Chris, okay. this is a conservation commission meeting, so the kids would uh -huh. be on their own. And the tenth was not good for you, Nikki. If we started at seven, if we start at, uh, uh, yeah, I might be in charge of something. Do I dare say a Friday night? <laughs> um, what, <laughs> exciting times. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting in the car. I don't oh, think I can do Friday night. I can't do that. That's how wild and crazy my life is. I mean, I can, I can make the ninth work. I think, and I, I have book group that night, but I can, I can skip my book group. <laughs> what time? What time is that, Sarah? Can we work? Or... It, let's, it's let's like, work. it's it's six thirty. So it's okay though. It's I, I, I can, I can definitely make that work. 
or late or whatever. So do we want to do that then, the ninth? The ninth. The ninth. Yeah. At six? Six sounds good. Six. six you want to do it six? Okay. Yeah, maybe we can finish, Sarah. You can get to your book group. Yeah. Or get to my group. <laughs> yeah, we can do a 30-minute. How long is it going to take? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we, we can do. It just depends on whether or not we have something else. Okay, six. Unless we have something. I'm gonna, oh wait, David's gonna send out a thing. I don't need to put I'm it. I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so moving on. Um, so then we need to set our April meeting, which would be the fifth. Does that make sense for everybody? Yep. Okay. So for the ninth, the only agenda item right now will be the um, reorg. Yeah, and we just have to make sure, I, I've got a note here, but, uh, I mean, and the minutes, we'll have the minutes, maybe Beth for tonight. Yeah, yeah. okay, and minutes. Okay, so reorg and minutes. Okay, and then for the fifth, well, we're gonna assume we're sticking with the first Tuesday. <laughs> after our reorg. You'll know um, that after the reorg. Right. We'll know after the reorg, but let's tentatively put in the fifth. Um, and that Are we going to meet at six or six 30 on the fifth? Yeah. Um, I was assuming six. six We've six. always done six. Yeah. Just yeah. making sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so for that, we have our normal principals, superintendent, um, And then the vote to ratify the support staff. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, Angie looks like she might have something. Angie? Yeah, I'm wondering if, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if we might have to do a um, CIP and school-wide plan update then, Christine? If we're done. Yeah, we might have some questions if we, at least it's on the agenda. Yep. What's going um, plan for sure? CIP potentially, right? So potentially. Plan. Yeah. But it's a Title I school wide plan that we need to share with you all. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think that covers that one. I'm sure there'll be more before now, before then, but. And hopefully we'll be in person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I will take a motion to move into executive session to discuss a student matter. Colleen's moving. I move. Scott is seconding. Okay. Beth, are you all set? Okay. Okay. All those in favor of going into executive session? I don't have to do a roll call on this, right? The aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so David, I think you can turn off the recording. Okie dokie. Okay. We are no longer. Good night, everybody. Well, thanks, Angie. Good night, Angie. Hi, Angie. Angie. And Lindsay, you guys are all set too. Um, yeah, I think Lindsay and Christine, even, I don't think you necessarily. Katie, you're yeah. fine. Yeah, Christine, this you're is not fine. about Welcome this to is, listen in. It's not. I mean, yeah, I mean, feel free <laughs> to you, stay, Christine. You're saying I can leave? Uh, we are, right. actually. Oh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>